plugin of the week is the Waves Tune Real Time. If you're familiar with uh, Waves Tune, uh, there's three versions. There's Waves Tune, there's Waves Tune LT, which is a uh, limited version, doesn't have all the feature sets, and now uh, we have Waves Tune Real Time. Uh, with the real time uh, plugin, how this differs is that it actually works in real time. It's designed to be used in live sound use, but also uh, works within the confines of a session. And I want to show you some really cool things because I think it's a really neat plugin. Let's start by doing an overview. So I'm going to uh, zoom in here a little bit and let's go over some of the features. And uh, you know, we'll just kind of take it one by one. Um, in this main section, this is where you're going to be setting up your pitch correction settings. So the speed is the attack time, more or less, uh, for the correction. Um, then on, on the other side, what we have is a note transition time. And this is tied to tolerance settings, which I'm going to get into in, in, a, in a second. The note transition time is basically like a crossfading of pitch correction from one note to the next. So it's how you transition from one note to the next. So if you're looking more for like a kind of really sharp, quantized kind of pitch movement, uh, then you can go to a faster note transition time. So that's that's kind of one of the things. And then there are some tolerances which kind of work within that. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. In a minute, You can also link these two settings so uh, that if you make an adjustment on one, they'll sort of adjust together simultaneously. And this allows you to create a relative relationship between them and also allows you to, uh, to set them up so that they work together. Now, when you call up the, uh, the plugin itself, it also has a vibrato feature. Uh, now, what this does is it allows you to either limit or exaggerate the vibrato. Um, but if you turn it off, what will happen is uh, the pitch correction will ignore vibrato and try to correct, or actually not ignore it, try to correct all the vibrato. So it'll try to flatten it out naturally based on the settings that you have up here. If you turn it on, however, um, the uh, pitch correction algorithms will ignore that. So it will allow the natural vibrato to happen at 100%, and then you can... Uh, by percentage, bring it down to uh, flattening it out or to exaggerating it. So it gives you some control over that. Now, when you work with the tolerance control and the time control, this is a way of kind of adapting the transition settings to compensate for uh, the performer and, and the individual performance. So the time control, what this does is it allows a sort of uh, time when a note is off in milliseconds, a, a given um, set time that you, you designate before it will start to apply the pitch correction. So in other words, if the pitch is off by uh, a certain amount, whatever that is, and uh, let's say it needs to be corrected uh, by however many cents it's off, it needs to be corrected and kind of pulled in. This is like a kind of delay before that happens. And that's different because the note transition is more like the total time over which that transition occurs. So in other words, this will kind of delay. And what this does is it's kind of designed to make up for artifacts. Or if you have a singer who has a lot of uh, unique character in their voice, or maybe there's um, a kind of a lot of articulation type of noises that are in uh, in their singing, and this will help you to kind of compensate for that. So this will help. This is very valuable at helping you to kind of smooth out and make more natural sounding uh, some of the settings. And then the sense, the um, the sense setting. What this does is it expands on the range of the correction. So uh, if you designate a scale, and we're going to do that in a minute, then what will happen is this will, uh, the normal um, crossover point would be 50 cents between two notes if you were on like a chromatic scale. And if you set this to 10, then what will happen is uh, it will look for boundaries. It has to be 60 cents out in either direction in order to pull, you know. Uh, so that's, that's another tolerance setting. You're just expanding a window uh, over which it tolerates pitch variation. And then you have a time uh, from which it's off by that amount, and then you allow it to kind of pull in. So sometimes these types of settings help to kind of bring in a little bit more naturalness into the overall correction. Um, you have a meter here which shows you the actual uh, correction uh, taking place. So this display is not, it'll show you the note, uh, and it'll show you the correction being applied. 
uh, it's not necessarily, uh, so when you see the display, if it's leaning towards the minus, that's what it's doing as opposed to where the pitch is. So you need to be aware of that. Um, it has an input level and output level, so you can see that. Um, and you can turn the correction on or off, and then it has a percentage control. So this allows you to, you could get kind of radical with your settings here and then back off by a percentage amount um, to determine how uh, heavily the pitch correction is applied. So this is kind of another way that you can go in and kind of work with it. Now, the formant can either be corrected or not corrected. Formant is basically the tonal character of a voice. Um, and this is uh, determined by the length of the throat, uh, the size of the throat, and or diameter of the throat, et cetera, all these characteristics, and how, of course, the person is singing. What is their natural voice? Do they have a natural head voice, chest voice? Are they singing from their diaphragm? Where are they pushing from? And it will exhibit a certain tonal character. If the formant is correct when you go up in pitch, the same basic tonal character will stay in place even though the pitch shifts to a higher pitch. When the person switches from their chest voice to their head voice uh, or they go to a falsetto, it'll still maintain the same basic character. If you take this off, then what will happen is you will exaggerate some of the artifacts. Sometimes this is a, a way of making uh, like a, a quantized type effect a little bit more roboticized. Um, because what will happen is if you go up an octave, for example, it will actually uh, will create sort of like what is called like a chipmunk effect. So it, the chipmunks, the way that those records were recorded, were, were really simple. It's kind of an interesting uh, history. I'll just make it uh, really short. But what they did was they recorded the songs at half speed uh, for the vocals, and then they brought it back up to full speed, and all the vocals went up by an octave, but because there's no format correction built into tape machines, they also, uh, the tonal character also changed. So it would be the equivalent of uh, decreasing the, the length and the size of the throat at the same time, and therefore you would get this squeaky kind of sound that would be chipmunks. And if you went in the opposite direction, it would have the opposite effect. Um, so uh, so we have all of this, right? and we have the window here, so this gives you more control over working with it. Now, when we get into this uh, section here, it defaults to a generic range, but you can actually select from a preset range of uh, different um, vocal areas. You can actually, if you move your cursor over this keyboard area, if you find that your vocalist is extending beyond a particular area, then you can extend that range. So uh, notes outside of this range will not be corrected. So you want to stay within the white key area. So when you set this up, it just kind of optimizes itself and is looking for pitch within there. Sometimes there are artifacts within a voice that may force pitch correction in a higher octave or a lower octave. Um, and uh, if that gets confused, then you don't want those to be pitch correct. So it'll basically ignore what's going on there. Now, um, Within this, you can also select a scale. Uh, oh, actually, one other thing. There's also a reference pitch. So if you ever end up in a session for whatever reason, there's no tuner, uh, or you have an acoustic piano, but it turns out that it's a little bit flat, um, then you can adjust the reference pitch accordingly. So all the pitch correction would be uh, centered around 430 instead of 440 or you know whatever the offset is. So you can calibrate that. If you ever end up, just a quick note, if you ever end up recording something in that situation, always record like a middle C or an A um, just to, to have the piano play that part so you can actually measure that pitch and then that becomes a reference later that you can use. When you work with the scales, uh, you can actually select a scale. Now, normally for me, I always work with chromatic scale, but you can select a uh, major, uh, different uh, forms of minor scale. Um, uh, some of the uh, ascending and descending scales, they will stay uh, uh, sharp one going up and flat one going down. So they actually are, the notes are different depending upon whether you're ascending or descending. Uh, and then there's all kinds of, you know, where are you starting, um, um, uh, Dorian, Mixolydian, blues, etc., pentatonic scales, etc., and a whole bunch of other scales. There's one interesting one here that's down at the bottom of the list that I want to kind of, uh, uh, or actually, hold on, uh, up right at the very top, excuse me, I'm doing it kind of backwards, so let me get back on sale here, which is the user scale. User scale is kind of interesting because it allows you to just sort of naturally define your own scale exactly the way that you want. So um, if I were, for example, to say uh, I want a major scale and this song is in G major, it will automatically remove those notes that are not members of G major. Now, 
what you'll see here is a little minus sign. And there's a couple ways to go about this. If I just click on this, it will go through a variety of different settings. And uh, because I have the group octaves, what it will do is it'll remove those notes from all of the octaves. I may want to uh, take that off and only remove, like they never sing um, this C sharp in this octave, but she sings it maybe up here. So you can remove it from down here so it doesn't get confused with any of the other notes that are going on there, okay? Um, but if you right-click on this or right-click on the note, what'll happen is it'll open up the different settings. So there's legal, which means that it will apply pitch correction. There's illegal, meaning that it says uh, this note um, do not pitch correct to this note. So you'll either move it towards whatever it's closer to. In this case, if I did it here, uh, as a C sharp, it'll either, either move it towards C or move it towards D, whichever one it is closer to. Now, if I want, I can also say, all right, this note doesn't exist, but this person always sings this note flat, and I want it to pull up instead of down. So it's shifting it to the wrong note. You could tell it to correct a note upward or tell it to correct a note downward. So it's a common thing that vocalists, when they sing, up, sometimes they'll get into the note flat, or sometimes if they're pushing too hard, they'll go and they'll hit the note very sharp. And if they consistently do that, then you can take that high note and dip it downward, and it will always make sure that it doesn't push it up a half step in the wrong direction. Um, and then you could bypass correction. Now, bypassing the correction, what that does, it means that it will allow that note to exist naturally the way that it, uh, that it does without applying pitch correction. So as long as it stays plus minus 50 cents around that note, it will stay remain unaffected. And if it goes beyond that, then it will get corrected either above or below. Sometimes, again, uh, depending upon the song, there may be uh, places where you want a note to kind of sound natural. You know, maybe it's a center of a vibrato and it's still getting some correction picked up around it. So you can kind of put that in. So this gives you a lot of options in terms of the way that you work. And it also allows you to decide what it is. Um, that the performer sings. And you can uh, therefore kind of remove things out. Now, what I found with most songs and the reason why I generally work chromatic is that um, other than nursery rhymes, they're always typically like passing notes and things like that. Um, and what I found is that unless I find a specific note where it is a problem where I know it's like that's a bad note, my general tendency is to start chromatic and then remove notes that I know they never sing within the song. Uh, so that's that's kind of cool. Um, down here, uh, so if you kind of get into a whole mess here, you can kind of reset the scale. So that will reset any settings that you have. So anything you have up here, you can reset it. There's also a very handy tool here, which is a reference tone. So if I hit a note, it will play that note. And then I have a separate level control. So this, this way, if I'm saying, oh, what's that note that they're hitting there? And then, you know, I, I can hit the note and then uh, decide whether it's like, oh, okay, it's pulling it to the wrong note there. That sounds funny, but it should be this note instead of that note. I can also target the pitch with a keyboard. And what that means is that if I now hit a keyboard, so now I have a separate keyboard here, you can see the mouse is remaining there. I can hit another note from an external keyboard, and I can also apply pitch correction manually with this control where when the person is singing, I can make them stay on that B in this particular case. So it gives me some control in that regard. So with all these basic settings, let's start by listening to a couple of lines of the vocal, and then we'll apply some pitch correction, go through some of the different features, and then uh, try a couple things, have some fun with it. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping, ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. All right, so there's a few things going on there. There's some uh, vibrato in there, and, and there's some other uh, things in there. So we're going to kind of play with it. So you could see what it was, uh, what it's telling you kind of what it's going to do. So, uh, and a lot of this has to do with the long transition time. I'm going to leave the speed here to uh, 15 milliseconds, and now I'm going to play it uh, just as is. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping, ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping, ain't no stopping. Okay, and then that just repeats around. 
So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to decrease this because the pace of the song is much faster. In other words, the amount of notes that she's singing, they're not generally long, sustained notes. So I'm going to make the note transition shorter so that the pitch correction is a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more um, uh, precise. So if you have a song where it's more uh, legato, sustained tones, longer notes, uh, then the longer note transition times will help it to sound more natural. But with this, I need it to be a little bit more aggressive and a little bit faster. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take and I'm going to actually uh, remove uh, this note here. Oops, that's a bypass. Oh, uh oh, now I got myself into big trouble here. All right, and let's just see here. Ain't no stopping. That's just who we are. Trusting who you are. No stopping. Ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping. That's just who we are. I think what it's doing is it's kind of uh, vibratoing its way through there. So I'm just going to kind of leave that as it is, and we'll just kind of work with it. So one of the things that I want to um, do here is I want to just show you how I can make this a little bit more aggressive sounding. So if I make the note transition really sharp and increase the speed, then I can make this. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. And then I'm going to turn off the vibrato and uh, make the format not corrected. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping. And so that's that starts to get a little bit uh um uh, a little bit aggressive, but this helps to, um, in this particular section, it's not like a perfect, uh, quote unquote, like T-Pain effect uh, type of uh, scenario here, but you can actually achieve that effect really, really, really well. So I'm going to stay closer here uh, with this plugin. So if that's what you're going for, it's really good for that. All right, so I'm going to uh, back off here for a second. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of try to smooth out the pitch here by kind of adding a little bit of time here, which is going to hopefully allow uh, some of those vibratos to land a little bit more cleanly and be less affected by the pitch correction. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. So one thing I want to do here is on this note here, I'm going to shift this down, but I'm also going to shift the note down here. So what I can do is I can sort of cascade these so that the top note never goes up to this high note. So if I wanted to be able to take this and shift that melody so when it goes up to that high note, it doesn't go up to that note. Uh, let's just see what that happens. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. So I can prevent it from going up to that higher note by uh, doing that. So I just wanted to kind of show you um, there, and you could see what, what note it's trying to play as we kind of go along um, with this. So one other thing um, that I want to show you here is kind of playing around a little bit with um, uh, with the MIDI. Because I can target particular notes. Um, and this can sometimes come in handy for certain purposes where I can have it, if, if she sings the wrong note, I can actually perform, edit the MIDI into place and get it to apply the pitch correction um, in real time and change it to the note that I want it to be. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't right, no and stopping. so that's that's actually pretty pretty aggressive in terms of the amount of pitch correction. If uh um, let's just try it with a higher ain't note. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. 
Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. So uh, what you can do with this, and I'm, I'm kind of farting around right here, but what I can do is I can uh, I can do something here. Uh, I actually just kind of set this up here, and, and this can actually be kind of a cool feature to add in along with this, where I can have um, like a, a duplicate uh, of the uh, existing vocal tracks. So I have a duplicate without the pitch correct on here. So what I could do with this is I can actually set it up where if I wanted to, I could start to have some harmony parts. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Of course, uh, it would help if I if I like uh, figure out the right key here and kind of uh, play something that's sensible, but... Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Uh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm making a mess of this, but you got the basic idea. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Okay. All right. I won't embarrass myself anymore with that. Um, but <laughs> anyway, I it was kind of playing around with it and I actually found a couple notes. It's like, okay, I can actually kind of dial this in and make this work. And uh, without actually making it, without changing some other things, like, you know, uh, adding a little delay, modulating it, moving some other things around, it actually can create a really effective harmony part that kind of works in the background where you could just kind of program it, lay the MIDI in and uh, and program the other notes that you wanted to appear on. All right, so let me uh, let me take this out here and uh, go back to where we were. A couple of the things that we can kind of play with here um, that that may help with to smooth this out um, and and clean up some of the artifact in here is working with the, with the no percentage. Ain't no stopping. That's just who we are. Trusting who you are. No stopping. Ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. So what I'm doing with this is I'm 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 kind of setting an amount that the correction is applied. So I'm limiting it. So if I have it here, you'll see more. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. And if I pull it back, then it will lessen. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. And what this does is it allows me to create a more natural feel to it. So some of this I'm, I'm obviously exaggerating. So in playing with all these different settings where I can slow down uh, the transition time, the melody moves a little bit too quickly here for me to try to even imagine setting up a harmony or or probably doing some of these settings. But with doing this, I can actually kind of smooth things out here and make it very natural sounding. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. And then I can kind of work that in, so here a little bit of... It's enlightening. ...of a verse. Who we are. Don't have a manual, but together we can use start. We are standing, just feet apart. Not recognizing the reflection of a superstar. When your legs start to give up on you, still run the race. There's a note in there that's no good. It's just what we have to do to just claim the fame. Ain't no stopping, that's just who we are. Trusting who you are, no stopping, ain't no stopping. It does. She does sing that note in there somewhere, so I'd have to bypass that for a particular section. This kind of gets back a little bit to what I was talking about with this. Uh, but you can see here how this is a, an amazing way to kind of um, uh, uh, just quickly kind of set up. I've kind of gone through the long form process of going through all the individual settings and what they uh, what they actually do, giving you an idea of how the basic setup of it goes. Uh, and the rest you can kind of do yourself. But it's a very valuable tool. It's a really great addition to the collection uh, of Waves plugins. Again, really designed well for working um, uh, in live sound for live performances. So it's a very, very, very uh, low latency uh, plugin. So perfect for that type of situation. 
Uh, you can uh, store the notes and uh, setups and keys and all of this sort of stuff, store them as presets, uh, load them in as you go from song to song. This way, uh, if you understand there are certain parameters that need to be tweaked in, this is stuff that you can do if you're working in a live sound situation where you record that vocal uh, and then you go through the different settings, find all the ones that work that give you the good correction and then apply them in, in the live uh, situation so that you can apply the pitch correction and then switch between the different presets, toggle between the different presets as you go from song to song so you're remaining in the right key, removing the right notes, and also uh, being able to play with the art, you know, uh, some of the settings here for tolerances depending upon if the performer is singing uh, better or worse on any particular night. Very cool plugin. New one by Waves. This is uh, the uh, Waves Tune real time and it is the plugin of the week. <laughs> 